Welcome to the Sandbox Comprehensive Player Model Guide Episode 3. Last episode we left off on a cliffhanger, so let's get to the wizards that will speed up your workflow immensely. But first, make sure to check the pinned comment for any correction. Right, let's delete all of this physics nonsense. Let's look at the star dropdown instead. At the bottom, you have the create by Peragdol wizard, and if we select it, you are given a neat list of bonds, with handy dropdowns to select your model's analog. You can even select none, which we will do for the clavicles. You don't have to give every bone physics, even if they're between two bones that do. Keeping your ragdolls as simple as possible gives you the best results. Now, if we press create ragdoll... YES! Uh, I guess some tweaking is required. But first, I'll show you this wizard's uglier counterpart, which I'll suggest you use instead. Let's undo and add a new node. Search for Ragdoll and you are presented with two wizards. The first is the one we just used and the second is the real time saver, create Ragdoll parts. If we select it, we are presented with an uglier list of bones. Let's select the bones and press OK. As you can see, the ragdoll is almost exactly the same. The Create by Ped Ragdoll wizard is basically a prettier skin of the other ragdoll parts. I prefer the latter for a couple of reasons. For starters, it's not limited to biped ragdolls. It's also faster if you only need a few bones, and it will not overwrite or keep adding joints and shapes if it sees you already have one or the other. This has saved us quite a lot of time by not having to position all of the elements manually, especially those pesky joints, but the results are questionable. For example, the feet are spheres? What? Most nodes you can replace with another node of the same type by right clicking and selecting replace with. In this case, let's replace the sphere with a box. Great, now let's mirror it. You will think it's as easy as right clicking and selecting mirror to duplicate, but that's useless because all it does is invert the values, which I don't know how they thought this was going to be useful. Instead, delete the left foot sphere and... I seem to have forgotten it. No matter, we can just add it with the ragdoll parts. Here it is. And it has added it. So delete the sphere, create a duplicate of the right foot, drag it back up, and change the parent to the left foot. And that seems to have done the trick, except the foot is a little off. That's because, since the bone axes are aligned, if we reparent a shape, we will have to invert a couple of values. If the values are all squished up and you can't see them, and you don't want to extend your node editor all the way to the right, you can extend the categories by dragging the line in between. Now we can see all the values. For starters, invert the side axis. Normally that will be Y, but since in our model that's up, we'll have to invert Z. If this was a sphere, we'd be done, but since boxes also have a rotation, you'll have to invert those as well. Luckily, we explained the pitch, yo and roll in the last episode. Unluckily, it is still a butter, so here is a quick cheat sheet instead. First, invert the roll. And then, invert the pitch if you're using Y up, or the yo if you're using Z up. Of course, since the value is zero, you don't have to invert anything. Now they are perfectly mirrored. I'm going over the shapes to make sure they all fit the model nicely. Also, make sure your bones are not colliding into each other. Previously, we mentioned how a child and a parent bone ignore each other's collision, but that does not apply to the child of the child, or the parent of the parent, and any others along the hierarchy. You see this commonly when you have many bones close to each other like the spine or the shoulder area, which is another reason not to include the clavicle. As you can see, I also deleted the right limbs, since I'll mirror them later. Luckily for me, capsules and spheres are made up of points in allocation, so mirroring them is much faster as you don't have to mess with any rotation. And finally we're done! Looks pretty good to me, and if we start the simulations... Oh god damn it, that's the left foot, right? It seems I missed a joint there. Let's see. Pelvis to leg upper. Leg upper to leg lower. Pelvis to leg upper. Where's leg lower to the left foot? Whatever. I can just add it with the ragdoll parts. 
And there it is, perfect use and the total intentional. Now if we start back the simulation, looks pretty good to me. However, we can still see that some bones are not exactly rotating like they should. So let's go ahead and tweak the joints. By default, it will always use the physics joints conical, which, just like the revolving joint, can twist around one axis. However, the main motion of this joint is through the swing of the two remaining axes, whose limit they share can be visualized with a conical shape. I will be including the file for this model in this episode's downloads. I made it to try out axes and joints, and it might be of some use to you. I've also left in it some other examples of joints with short annotations so you can get acquainted with them. Anyways, back to joint conical. This type of joint is very versatile, and for most bones, no fine tuning is required. Then again, most bones are the spine bones. Let's start with the easiest, the head. You can usually search on the internet what the limits for a bone are. I'd say twist 40 degrees for the roll, then for the swing about 70 degrees, which will cover both the yo and the pits. And here I am back a month later, don't ask what happened, I'm on the sunny lightning mode now. Let's rotate the model so it points to the light. Oh, what the hell? There we go. The cone will need to point forward, so let's get to it. The red arrow is forward, so this means... Oh, it's backward. And oh wow, up is up this time. It seems the wizard tries to do some sort of axis alignment. You got this wrong, my guy. Forward is supposed to be pointing to the next bone. Wait, is it trying to say that my model is backwards? Screw you, buddy. I'm trying to keep things consistent here. This decision may seem odd, but it's probably to speed up the process of creating routers. At least the rotations themselves are aligned to the child of the joint, unlike earlier where adding joints manually would use the parents. Let's just approximate using the rotation gizmo set to local. And... just a bit more... Perfect! That was yo! Good lord, this is not exactly human legible valve. Right, minimum twist, negative 40 degrees, maximum twist, 40 degrees, and swing limit, 70 degrees, which goes both ways, so it's more like 140 degrees. Next up are gonna be the hands. Similarly with the head, I'm not happy with the angles it gave it, so I'll just get rid of them. I'll tweak the pits a little so the twist is aligned with the bone. Minus 13 seems alright, let's say about 60 degrees for the swing and 20 degrees for the twist. Let's say we want to change only the swing angle without affecting the twist angle. You can offset it here in swing offset angle. I put in 13, I preferred where it was before I tweaked the pits. God damn, you can't see anything in sunny. Ah, oh, back to default I go. Offsetting is not really a thing for the twist, since you can specify both the minimum angle and the maximum angle. And if that doesn't work, you can just yo it around. In fact, your hand can pitch forward further than it can backwards. I bet you just tried it. Time to mirror this joint. Delete the right hand, copy and paste the left hand, reparent the parent, reparent the child, and now, just like when we mirrored shapes, first invert the roll, and second, invert the pits if you're using Y up, or Yo if you're using Z up. Same for the swing offset angle, if you have any. Now, it doesn't look like they were mirrored correctly. As we've discussed when mirroring shapes, the bones are all aligned, so the pits of the cones will point to the same direction, so don't worry, the limits were mirrored correctly. And I can prove they're the same, using the trick from last episode to check the limits you can see that they bend at the same angle. Despite looking like they have different limits, the differences is just a visual thing. Hopefully in the future there will be a better way to mirror shapes and joints, but I'm not counting on it. I leave you to do the foot as a little exercise. It's going to be pretty similar to the head, but with more of setting. Oops, I just leaked the settings. Once you're done with that, we'll move to the next bones that require fixing. Those being the revolving joints, like the knees or elbows, as they can only rotate on a single axis. If you select them, and remember, you can select multiple nodes by holding CTRL, and then you right click them, you can replace them, 
let's choose the revolute joint. Now the matter of setting up the limits and mirroring them should be pretty simple for you. And I know I said the spine is fine as is, but I prefer a little more freedom of motion. Lastly, go ahead and select all of the joints. If multiple of these nodes share the same option, you are able to modify them all at once. In this case, let's go ahead and bump up the friction to at least one. And finally, we have a proper ragdoll. Wowee! So realistic. There are still some value side tweaks, but let's move on for now. The last thing I want to show you is how to make an old style Sword Swan ragdoll. You see, in Source games you didn't have model dock, so you couldn't use shapes to build your collision. You were forced to make a physics full file and reference it. If you'd rather have that, let's replace all of the physics shape with a whole file. But where am I going to get one? Oh right, last episode. Ignore how the thumbnail is different, it's because it shares the path file from another project. It just hasn't updated yet. Since the hull is separated in different meshes, we can hide all the parts but one using exclude all. So select all of your nodes and... Oh what the hell, I just explained you could edit those shared options. I guess you have to exclude all one by one. Remember to switch the import mode to hull per mesh and the optimization algorithm to incremental vertex reduction. Now go through all the nodes and check back the mesh for the relevant bone, in this case it's for the pelvis. Let's speed up a little bit. Hey, I don't have one for this. I guess I can just delete this one. And the end result is a source style ragdoll. Alright, oh, I deleted some spine bones. Delete this, the target pelvis to spine 2. And the end result is a source one style ragdoll. With very accurate physics. Albeit a little laggier than when it was made with shapes, I'm sure. With that, we're mostly done with the model dog section of the player model. Tune in next episode for the finishing touches. I think I preferred the other ragdoll.